Look up in the sky. This is superhero of travel. It's Ricky Tyers from Richie Your Time to Travel on TalkTimeRadio.com. Radio the way it should be heard. And today's show is called 9-11 Made This Tiny Pennsylvania Town World Famous. And the town that we're talking about is Shanksville, Pennsylvania. We're talking about Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And uh, during 9-11... Uh, the terrorists drove United Flight 93 into the field at 563 miles per hour. When I was at the memorial, I read that the plane was inverted and hit the ground at 563 miles per hour. The plane hit so hard, the ground swallowed it up. <clears throat> then everybody came, the FBI, the ATF, the NTSB, and thousands of people FBI agents sat on their knees and combed the ground with their fingers. Uh, they excavated the crater down 40 feet. They removed every scrap of steel, every piece of flesh. They tore this place apart, and then they paved over it with dirt. And the story that is being told is what happened after 9-11 and before they built the memorial. So what you're looking at now, what you're looking at now is they have a they have a map that shows the path of the flight. So how this memorial is built, all all that area is to, is towards towards the crash site. So it, as you walk down as you walk down that area you, you're going to walk to an end, and then you'll see um, the wall of names, and you'll see the crash site. But this is like an arrow. How, how this is built is it's like an arrow pointing to the crash site. So what you're looking at is the center. Uh, what, you're, what you're looking at is the center uh, that, that, that leads to the crash site. So from that crash site, they have um, walkways where you can walk all the way down to the Wall of Names. What we did was we got back on the bus and took the bus down to um, the, the Wall of Names. But this, this right here is the Memorial Center. And um, it's where um, it's the... It's National Memorial Center, and um, it kind of guides you. It guides you to the crash site. So the video that we're showing is video of the Memorial Center. Uh, we're showing you the Memorial Plaza, which is down below, and we're going to show you the Tower of Voices. Um, the Tower of Voices is is simply amazing. But again, this is um, this continues to be the National Memorial Center. So you get to you get to the end, and you're looking down. Move your finger. You're looking down at the crash site and the wall and the wall of names. And there's and there's forty there's forty names on the wall that they're talk about. And how they explain this is that uh, it's a common field one day in a field of honor forever. And they name the crew members and the passengers, and they tell you what happened on 9-11. Um, on September 11, 2001, morning, four commercial airlines are hijacked by al-Qaeda al terrorists in a planned attack against the United States. Two are flown into the World Trade Center. The World Trade Center Twin Towers in New York City. A third is flown into the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. And the fourth plane, United Flight 93, a Boeing 757 born for San Francisco, California from Newark, New Jersey, is delayed 25 minutes before takeoff. What you're looking at now is the voice is a uh, is a tower is a tower of voices. 
Um, the tower, the tower of voices are pretty amazing. Uh, it represents. Um, It represents all 40 passengers on the plane, and it has 90. It has 93 charm, chimes, so um, you can hear it when the wind blows. That 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 it makes it makes a noise. It makes it makes a tremendous noise, uh, and it stands 93 ni 93 feet high. Is is how tall that is? It is 93 feet feet high. And it has 40 different chimes to represent the passengers that died, died on the plane. And when the wind blows, and the wind blows up there consistently, it makes noises. It makes tremendous noises. Um, and that's at, the, that's at the beginning, that's at the beginning of the memorial. Um, so as you come in, you see you see the, uh, the the Tower of Voices for Flight 93. Okay, all, all that's pretty amazing. But uh, to get back to the story of what happened that day, um, after 46 minutes flying went over eastern Ohio, hijack hijackers in first class attacked at 9.28 a.m., uh, knocking out the captain and the first officer and hi hijackers turned Flight 93 southeast, headed for D.C., most likely the U.S. Capitol. And just before 10 a.m., the plane is seen flying low over southwestern Pennsylvania, and at 10.03, it crashes upside down at 563 miles per hour into the Somerset County field. There are no survivors, all 33 passengers, seven crew members, and four hijackers are killed. So the story I was starting to tell at the beginning of the show was a story that was told to me, and I've not confirmed it, but a story that was told to me was that they, in Toledo, Ohio, they have an Air Force base, and jets were um, scrambled from the Air Force, Air Force base in Toledo Uh, and and uh, the flight, the, um, the pilots were scrambled from the Air Force Base in Toledo to take out this jet. Uh, they realized that the uh, bombs they had on their, their jets weren't big enough to take their uh, plane down, so they went up to Michigan, reloaded, and then scrambled to take the jet down. And their instructions were, if you can't take it down, to ram it. But this jet had, had to come down. And, uh, of course, they didn't have to do any of that, but the pilots today still suffer from the fact that they had to um, scramble to take, to take to shoot down an air, a airplane, and they still have mental effects from that today. Uh, one pilot had to retire uh, and they're and they're still suffering from uh, having to scramble to take this jet down. But fortunately, uh, the passengers and the crew of that plane uh, crashed the plane. Uh, and uh, and today, the memorial uh, kind of stands stands as a testament to what they did in taking this plane down. And this memorial is. Pretty amazing. Um, if we have the video that shows the plaza, uh, it shows pictures of all the people that was on the plane that went down. And it was an assortment of people on, on the plane. It was 33, thir thir 33 passengers and seven crew members that, that went down. And it's pretty amazing in the story that they tell about this. And this memorial, as you go inside, uh, as, as you go inside the uh, center, uh, it actually uh, starts the story off how it started from the very beginning and how it ended. Uh, they, they give everybody, all, all the passengers and crew members, uh, this, this is the plaza, uh, and the plaza kind of tells the story 
the plaza I could take video um, the memorial I couldn't so <clears throat> so this is the plaza and it kind of it kind of tells a story it tells a story of what happened that day and as you go further it shows a picture of everybody that was on the plane uh, crew passengers um, it show it 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 shows a picture of everybody and the plaza and the plaza leads up to the wall of names i didn't go all the way down to the wall of names cuz the pictures the picture right there shows everybody that died on that plane on september 11th uh, but as you go further um you, you like like you can walk down a pathway and you can walk down, walk down to the Wall of Names. Uh, this place is um, a pretty sad place. Uh, it's, it's a pretty sad place because uh, it's just so lonely. It's it's so lonely on top of that mountain, um, and the and the only thing you hear is is the wind blowing. You hear the wind blowing. You hear the the chimes. The uh, you hear the chimes going, but it's such a lonely, lonely place. And um, the crew members and the passengers, this is their, fi their final resting place. Uh, and all this happened on 9-11, September 11, 2001. Uh, we, we visited this, this place. We probably spent a couple hours there. Um, it's just a remarkable place. It is a national park, so they had a stamp uh, that we've been here and that we visited um, this national park. I had to report how many people we had on the bus, uh, but this is a national park. It is free, and at uh, 11.30 and 1.30, uh, the troopers give a uh, tour of the place, of course, we missed it because we got there late. But you're able to go to their website and listen to the troopers uh, tell the story of 9/11. Uh, that 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 is available. Um, that was a pretty amazing place. And again, uh, the title of today's story is 9/11 made this tiny Pennsylvania town world famous. So uh, to get back to that story. Um, Shanksville, which is just a two miles from the crash site, uh, really, um, the United Methodist Church there they really buckled down, and in the very beginning, before they built the memorial, uh, they showed visitors who wanted to see the crash site. They showed them the way of 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 um, where it was. They even assign people. They assign people um, from 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 the town that they took turns sitting on top of that hill. So when visitors came, uh, they could take them. They could take them take them to the crash site. So the problem this 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 city had is that in the very beginning, when everybody was was coming to the crash site, uh, FBI. Um, the news, all these people, they provided them with food and clothing because a lot of them came with, um, they had no toothbrush, they had no clothes, so they provided them with food. Everything that they needed because when they came, they, they had none of that. So this, this, this tiny town, Shanksville, um, provided all that before the memorial was built. And a lot of people became exhausted. There's a writer uh, that wrote a story, and his story is called 9-11 Made a Tiny Pennsylvania Town World Famous. 20 years later, it feels left out. So now that the memorial's built, Shanksville feels left out. Uh, they're not getting any revenue from the National national. Um, um, Center, they're, they're they're getting no revenue from that. Uh, a lot of people have moved. Um, 
we we drove through the we drove through the town and and um it was pretty uh how can i say it um quiet uh Shanks, shanksville was was pr was pretty quiet we actually was on the wrong path to the memorial and we had to get out the bus and talk to some workers that was uh, uh, do, doing some work on the street, and they and they turned us they turned us around and and guided us the right way. But um, just 20 years later, Shanksville feels left out after giving as much as they gave in the very beginning before anything was built. Um, they 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 totally totally feel left out, and um, uh, their local volunteer fire department uh, was on the scene of the crash site uh, one of the horrific pictures that they show is how hard it was to get to the crash site because it had no roads uh, so they and this is a volunteer fire department this wasn't this these people were volunteer and they and they were the first ones on the scene of the crash site so all, all that's pre pretty amazing how this little town kept this site alive until they actually built the National Memorial. And if you ever get a chance uh, to go to this area, please do because uh, it will um, just let you know how, how, how much people sacrifice so that we can be here today. Because they, they, the terrorists were definitely, definitely trying to uh, uh, take out the, the Pentagon with one of the planes. And, uh, you know, just, just the unknown story is that how hard Shanksville took care of, took care of that, trash, that crash site after everybody had left and until they built the National, the National Museum there. So it's pretty amazing. Um, they use their they're using their cars to take people up to the top of the top of the mountain, and it's not a hill; it's a mountain. To take people up on the top of the mountain, they they use their headlights to shine on the spot where the plane went down. Um, and most of the time, in the winter time, it, it was pitch black up there. Also, uh, when it first happened. They, f they fed the FBI, they fed the news people, they closed the people, gave them toothbrushes, gave, just gave them everything. So it's a pretty amazing how um, they, Shanksville um, at that time had a pop population of about 224 people, 100 houses, three churches, one convenience store, and they also had the most important event of the 21st century. So the town today feels left out, you know. Home to 224 people, 100 houses. Most of you guys have that much in your neighborhood. And they really took care of the crash site until they built the National Memorial that's the reason why it says today that they feel left out, that they absolutely feel, feel left out. Um, their, their volunteer fire department, and if you ever go see this place and how it sits on top of a hill, and at this time there was no roads there, the volunteer fire department struggled to get to the crash site. They struggled to get to the crash site. Um, they gave the FBI, um, all the visitors closed because they all arrived with no clothes, no toothbrush. Uh, they, they fed them, kept them warm. And today, Shanksville feels left out. It just, it, it feels, feels totally left out. So uh, we went there from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was 167 miles. Uh, took us um, a few hours to get there, about three hours to get there, uh, but it was well worth the trip. And if you ever get a chance, you need to visit their website and listen to the troopers uh, tell the story 
of 9-11, they do a fantastic job about that. Um, again, what did I say? This was a town of about 224 people, and after everybody left that crash site, they absolutely took care of everything. So again, we're, we're looking at the Memorial Plaza. One of the amazing pictures there is the people that died on board, on board uh, Flight 93 from uh n from new jersey and it was it, it it was people from all all walks of life all all walks of life it was um it was blacks it was whites just just people from all walks of life gave their life that day to crash that plane and uh it's it's totally amazing um if the terrorists had flown the plane a few seconds longer they they would have uh, annihilated a Shanksville school. Instead, the instead the jet crashed in a field, sending black smoke over the tree lines. Ch children on the third floor of the school saw the smoke from their classroom windows, and a few adults in Shanksville saw it too. So uh, this was a horrific event, and. Uh, So this person um, really, really put everything together. Uh, they, she put everything together. Or they organized the people. If the plane would have crashed a few seconds later, it would have crashed into a school because the school was right was right on that path. And that particular day, the school was packed. So when when we talk about how this tiny, tiny Pennsylvania town feels left out. It's because in between the time of the crash until they built the memorial, this town, this United Methodist Church, took care of everybody that visited the site. They went so far as to assign people times to sit, to sit up on that mountain and wait for visitors to come so they could take them to the crash site. There's times that they actually drove people up on the mountain to take them to the crash site. In the dead of winter, in the darkness at night, there's somebody that stood, in, stood, on, that, stood on that mountain so if visitors came, they could show them the crash site. So today, 20 years later, Shanksville Pennsylvania feels left out. And I will say, in driving through Shanksville, um, it was a, a very lonely town. Uh, in the story that this particular guy writes about, uh, about Shanksville, there's people that moved away um, that United Methodist Church uh, was no longer, didn't have as many members as they had before uh, because people had moved away they had uh, uh, given all that they could give, and they just feel that they never got anything back in return. Never got any, uh, 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 anything ba back in return. And now uh, the memorial is built, the uh, Flight 9311 memorial is built, and it's built on top of this, this, this mountain where the plane crashed. And the only noise you hear is the wind blowing. There's no other noise and the tower of voices it is the two noise is the two noise that you hear when you're up on that mountain, the wind blowing and the tower of voices. It's a pretty amazing place. If you get a chance you should visit it and uh if you um can't can't visit it personally, you need to go online and read all about it. But uh uh, Flight 93 was destined to D.C. to take out the Pentagon. And uh, the passengers of the, of, of, of the plane forced it down at 563 miles per hour into the ground. Uh, it, it made a crater so big that uh, it swallowed up the plane. It abs absolutely swallowed up the plane. And, and the, pictures, the pictures of the hole... 
Uh, it's just, it's, it's totally amazing. Totally amazing. Um, recover, f- recover from the crash site. The, c- the cop picked voice recorder, captured the shouts, thumps, crashes, and breaking of glass and plates. The 9-11 commission reported that the hijackers, although remaining in control of the plane, must have judged that the passengers and crew were mere seconds from overcoming them. To continue sounds of the counterattack, Flight 93 crashed into this field. The crash site is 18 minutes flying time from Washington, D.C., and the actions, the actions of the unarmed passengers and crew uh, defeated the, ter- the terrorist plan. So if you get a chance, visit the site. It's totally amazing. Uh, shot f- a few video of it. Uh, but uh, you really have to visit the place to get the full feel of it. Uh, there's a story um, uh, where this guy talks about how the town feels left out. Um, as a matter of fact, when he told the story, uh, there's people that didn't want to talk to him. It's your time to travel. Um, look up in the sky. It's a superhero travel. It's Ricky Tyus. And we're able to take you around the world by air, land, or sea, even by flying saucer. And we're live on TalkTainmentRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard.